Hello, I'm Lenny McGill, the master of concealment. Today I want to talk about two different holsters that are identical in every way except for the material that they're made of. One is the Royal Guard, our T0029, it's the world's best concealment holster. And the other one is the Summer Comfort, and it's T0165. Now both of these holsters are identical in design. And they both are inside the waistband holsters. You can see the snaps right here, and of course here as well. What's different is the material that they're made of. The Royal Guard is made of horse hide on the outside, whereas the um, Summer Comfort is made of cow hide. Now, the difference between cow hide and horse hide is the density of the leather. Horse hide is thicker, it's um, more resilient to sweat. So, this holster, this horse hide holster, will last you 10, maybe 20 years. And I'm not joking because I've got one that I've had for 15 years and I've got videos to prove it. And I've, you know, if you watch my concealed carry videos, you'll see that it's the same holster I use a lot over and over again. And I still have that holster and I still use that holster. And it works great. This one is cowhide. Now, the difference between cowhide and horse hide is, again, the density. So, like a good wallet that you wear, you know, you own and you put in your pocket and you sweat on for a long time, over time the wallet kind of gets soft and gets comfortable and gets very pliable, which is good for a wallet, after a while, of course, uh, until it disintegrates. Well, cowhide does the same thing more so than horsehide. After you wear this inside the waistband, especially you people who live down in Phoenix and Texas and those hot, humid climates in Florida, of course, the sweat is going to get all over this holster, and eventually the salt and the sweat will break down the leather. That's basically what happens. So this Summer Comfort holster will become soft and comfortable, which is good for a holster for a while, but after a while it starts to lose its retention, and it starts to sag a little bit, and it doesn't really do what you want a holster to do, which is securely hold the handgun. So that's the only difference. This one is about twice as expensive as this one. This one will last you basically a lifetime. This one will last you, depending upon how many times you use it and what climate you live in and how much you sweat and the amount of salt in your sweat, because all those things come into play, uh, this could be you know, a couple years, maybe three or four or five. Uh, if you're a heavy sweater, think about you know, two or three years, okay? Now, what's great about an inside the waistband holster is that most of the gun is inside your pants. So let me go ahead and demonstrate real quick. Let me work with the, uh, the black Summer Comfort. Uh, by the way, that Royal Guard, you can get black belt loops and they will just screw right in here if you want to go ahead and conceal that way. Now, this guy, like I said, goes inside the waistband. So I'm going to show you just right here on the front. Typically, I would wear this back here or I'd wear it up here in the appendix carry. But for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and loosen my belt just a little bit just so I have a little bit of room and come down here and put this into position. And that's kind of how I'm going to wear it right there. And you'll notice that that's where most of the gun is underneath the belt. All right. So when I actually put the gun inside, there you go. Most of the gun is, is secure. So really, no one can see anything except for those two snaps. If you've got a black belt and you've got the black straps, it's very difficult to see. So let me go ahead and uh, show you basically what you do is you just get your straps positioned. Now you'll notice what I'm doing too is I'm putting it on either side of my, my belt loop. Now that may or may not work for you. Uh, I'm doing it so that now the holster is not going to slide anyway. So I've got it kind of captured. And then I can go ahead and get my belt cinched down and you'll notice I'm going to come down one extra notch because the gun's going to take up about an inch and a half or so. So that's what we suggest when you buy a concealed carry belt, you know you're going to carry concealed, buy a larger belt. All right, of course this gun is unloaded and I'm going to go ahead now and just put it into the holster and then conceal. And that's basically it right there. All right, of course no one's really going to be able to tell that you have a gun on. And if you have another shirt on or a jacket on over top of this, of course, no one's going to tell either. And again, you know, the gun's right here. And to access the gun, you know, typically I'm going to take my offhand and just pull the, gun up, the, the shirt up, get a good strong grip, and come out. And again, keeping my finger off the trigger until I get up and the gun gets downrange. And that's when I can actually present the gun and get the uh, trigger 
finger activated to the trigger. So that's it right there. Like I said, this holster is brand new. I just took it out of the case. So what you're going to want to do when you get a brand new leather holster, okay, because leather is different because leather, when they make a leather holster, they'll actually shrink it around a, a dummy gun. They'll put a Glock 19 in there. They'll get it wet. And they'll form it. They'll make it all pretty and nice. And then uh, it'll dry and shrink itself around that position. And so hence, the holster will be tight when you first get it. So what you'll need to practice, and this is what I've said in a lot of the videos, is not only are you going to practice your draw before you actually go out with an unloaded gun, before you take this gun onto the, the street, you want to practice, 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 make sure you're proficient with it, you understand it. But you're also going to want to wear the holster in a little bit. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's go through our draw technique again. We're going to go ahead and raise the shirt and come out. All right. Now, like I said, one of the things you want to do when you get a brand new holster, especially a leather holster, whether it be horse, or cow, no matter who the manufacturers is, you want to get that holster and you want to put it in and you want to pull it out. And you know what I typically tell people is that I want to sit there and watch a television show that I like, maybe for a half hour, 45 minutes, and I want to do this maybe about two or 300 times. And I'm not joking, because you need to develop a wear channel inside the leather for the gun, so that when you go to draw it, it will come out. Okay, it'll still hold, but it'll come out. You won't be fighting it to get out. And that's just a matter of, uh, you know, really working the gun in and out of the leather because, again, like I said, the leather will shrink up a little bit based upon the manufacturing technique. Uh, but once you get it broken in and once you wear it a little bit and once you've practiced with it a little bit, you can be extremely fast with this type of holster. Uh, again, in self-defense, in concealed carry, it's not about speed, it's about awareness. And also maybe a little deception. So if there is a bad guy, a bad thing happening, maybe you want to get away from him so he can't see what's going on, get the gun up, still can't see the gun, and then come around. All right? The idea is that you know you have the gun, and you can draw it when you need to. Don't let the bad guy see it. You be the one in charge of the surprise. You be the one in charge of the control situation. And you're the one who knows the awareness factor based upon keeping your head up and just being aware that this could be a dangerous spot. I'm going to get out of my car, go to the ATM. I'm going to get out of my car, go to the uh, store. That's when danger happens. All right? In your car, you're pretty safe. But as long as you know that you know, your awareness factor is probably the most important self-defense tool you have, the gun is really second. I hope this is uh, a good introduction to these two holsters. They're identical, like I said, in every way except for the leather versus the horse hide and the cost. So it's all about your decision to see which one will work best for you. Thanks for watching. I'm Lenny McGill.